It's only the gun, the anti-gun lobby, the gun control people, who literally know nothing about the product they're trying to ban. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. If you haven't hit the deer with three shots, you're a pretty lousy shot. That deer deserves to get away. Let's get serious here. But that would ban most pistols. That would ban most... No, but pistols are different. You have to pull the trigger each time. An assault weapon, you basically hold it, goes... If you want to protect yourself, get a double barrel shotgun, have the shells of 12 gauge shotgun, and I promise you, as I told my wife, we live in an area that's wooded and somewhat secluded. I said, Jill, if there's ever a problem, just walk out on the balcony here, or walk out, put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts outside the house. I promise you, who's ever coming in is not gonna... <laughs> It. I don't think our founding fathers had these automatic weapons and military st style weapons in mind when the Second Amendment was drafted, when the Constitution implying, was drafted. So I, are you implying for the police or are you implying for the private citizen? Because the majority of private citizens are not allowed to own fully automatic weapons. It's for anyone. Okay, well, the gun law says that you and I can't just randomly go out and buy an automatic weapon, so let's deal with the facts here. A semi-automatic weapon is a gun that you and I are allowed to own, and in different places they have different rules. But to imply that anyone can walk out and buy an automatic weapon is just not true, Don. What do you mean anyone can't? Well, uh, listen, during the theater shooting in Colorado, I was able to go and buy an automatic weapon, and I, you know, maybe have shot a gun three, four times in my life. I don't even live in Colorado. I think most people can go out and buy an automatic weapon. Don what is your, I don't understand what is your definition your of an auto, What is it your definition of an automatic weapon? What is your definition of an automatic weapon? Uh, uh, well, for me, an automatic weapon is something that you can shoot off a, a number of rounds, a number of rounds very quickly. I was able to buy Don, an AR-15 within 20 minutes a in a state Don, of which that I'm not a and You don't that I'm know, not in all due respect, you don't know what you're talking about. An automatic weapon is when you pull the trigger one time and it continually shoots off one after another after another. A semi-automatic weapon. I can do that with my. I can do that with my AR-15. You're getting to, into you can, semantics here, just because it's not I am, semantics. Hang on, one Ben. Let me finish. One is semi-automatic. Yes, let me finish, Ben. But listen, I think you are getting into s semantics. Regardless what you want to call it, an automatic or a semi-automatic weapon. I can it's shoot a off a deal. number of it's rounds. It's a difference between breaking the law it, and it, not it, breaking the law. Dumb. What kinds of weapons be available to people? You know, uh, the, the five-shot ri rifle, that's a standard military rifle. The problem is if you attach a clip to it so it can fire 
more shells and uh, if you remove the pin so that it becomes an automatic weapon and those are independent uh, criminal offenses that that's when they become essentially a weapon of uh, mass destruction you're a moron We have federal regulations and state laws that prohibit hunting ducks with more than three rounds. And yet, it's legal to hunt humans. It's legal to hunt humans. It's legal to hunt humans. How stupid are they? Assault Weapons Ban and Law Enforcement Protection Act of 2007. It would regulate semi-automatic assault weapons, including weapons that have pistol grips, a forward grip, and something called a barrel shroud. Weapons with a barrel shroud would be regulated. What's a barrel shroud, and why should we regulate it? I actually don't know what a barrel oh, shroud. Okay, because it's in your it's a legislation. Shoulder thing that goes up. No, it's not. Who'd you talking about? <laughs> And, and just br very briefly to your last question, what's the efficacy of, pa of banning these magazine clips? I will tell you, these, these, this is, these are um, ammunition. They're bullets. So the people who have those now, they're going to shoot them. And so if you ban, if you ban them in the future, the number of these high-capacity magazines is going to decrease dramatically over time because the bullets will have been shot and there won't be any more available. Are you kidding me? This right here has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets. incendiary device on the tip of it, which is a heat-seeking device. Think about that. That's just dumb. I think the Second Amendment is in the Constitution so that we can have muskets when uh, the British people come over in 1800. Gun control people who literally know nothing about the product they're trying to ban. What could possibly be the justification for banning muzzle loaders? Well, you know, unfortunately, if you had me, if you had me on every time there was a mass shooting, it might be every night. But I'm, I'm glad to be on here. Uh, what you left out is there's actually a company that's trying to jump through a loophole uh, like people do and create a muzzle that can be shot with a silencer uh, that shoots 50 caliber bullets. That can do a lot of damage. Let's say the DC sniper wanted to do something. All you need is one bullet to kill someone. And what we're doing now is actually trying to have a conversation before, because every time we bring it up right after a shooting, you always say, now is not the time. And what I, what I come to believe right. is that we just don't want to have the conversation at all. So how many crimes do you think in the last, I don't know, 100 years have been committed with muzzle loaders? Well, well, once this new muzzle is created, we just don't know. But what you do a great job in, and it works for you, so I'm not saying you should stop. You do a great job of focusing on these single things when we really, really oh, need to have facts? a you mean the facts? Yeah, that is kind no, of like No, it's not facts. It's just uh, avoidance of a conversation about uh, guns, and you do it very well. Well, actually, I'd very much like to have a conversation about guns. So here you have Gabby Gifford's group saying that we need to regulate a rifle, a firearm, they clearly know nothing about. A muzzle loader is loaded from the muzzle, from the end of the barrel, but, the yeah, hole so where the bullet comes out. We and you put in the it. powder, and then the wadding, and then the round. But what I'm saying is, and the whole thing takes like a minute. But, so you know, it's not probably going to be responsible for a lot of mass shootings. Well, a silencer, <laughs> it's so and a, 50 crazy. a silencer and a 50 caliber bullet means that one person can die. And we're trying to talk about preventative 
and you don't want us to talk about reactionary. But the but, biggest but, issue, the wait, biggest but the, hold issue on, wait, is, Can I ask you a question? Sure. Hold on. Yeah, I know you're a gun expert, so you maybe can explain this to me. Why would a silencer have, what does a silencer have to do with the silencer? Because if you were the DC sniper, by the perhaps way. you want to shoot a gun that nobody can hear so you can get away. But silencers or suppressors don't make a gunshot inaudible. You can still hear it really well. I think they really do help. Uh, no, they don't. I, I've sh I've shot them in a 50 before, caliber it's fine. round. You know still what I'm going to do? Because noise. you're good at it. Uh, let's let's even say I grant you that. But the biggest, <laughs> okay. no, no, I will. Because the bigger conversation is there is an avoidance of a conversation of how the overabundance of guns in this country is correlated to gun no, violence. No, no, I'm trying to have this conversation in specific terms rather than in bumper sticker no, terms where we I make gross to. generalizations so, and the, we get away with that. So I'd like to just bring it back to the tangible, which here's an actual firearm that an actual gun control group is trying to regulate. And my question is why? Sure. They're, they're the least threatening firearm you could honestly pick out of the full range of firearms. So that suggests to me the people making this recommendation literally know nothing and they just expose you know what themselves they do know? as we should wholly start from, We should start from the macro. Guns. What they do know is that uh, the United States makes up 4% of the population, but almost own almost half of the guns in the entire world. What they do know is that there's a correlation between okay. countries that have access to guns and gun violence. What they do know is that you are no more likely to be robbed in America than you are in London but you're exponentially more likely to be killed because of the access to guns. And so what we need to do is well, have a Well, no, it's, it's actually a fairly complex question um, as to why that is. But, no, no, but let's get back study, to the specific... No, showed, let's, actually, recent studies showed when you adjust for population, the number right. one thing that tells you whether a country okay. is likely to have mass shootings is the access to guns. Right. But let me... I mean, I don't concede that point because it's silly, but let me just get you back to the specific true, point here. No, it's, it's speculative. But no, no. But what's study. not speculative study. is that an actual gun control group is trying to ban a gun that is responsible for precisely no crimes, no mass shootings, and takes almost a full minute to reload one shot. What's not so that's, speculative? That suggests to me that the goal is not safety. Sure. The goal is disarming the population. No, I'm that's trying why to save lives. What are you trying to do? Well, how many lives have been taken by muzzleloaders? Well, we're trying to prevent that. You don't even want to do that. Well, I, I, I don't think there's any evidence that it's ever happened or it ever will happen. So we shouldn't talk about it after mass shooting. We shouldn't talk about it before someone jumps through a loophole. So when just should we talk about it? Describe what a mass shooting by a muzzleloader no, would no, no, look I didn't like. Ask, no, no, I said, when should we talk about it? If we can't talk about it after <laughs> mass shooting. It's going to happen with a musket. No one will be killed by a musket crazy. that and can by the shoot way, 50 caliber? If, if it does, okay. But also, the, the biggest thing, which is not speculative, you won't even acknowledge that perhaps a country that has 4% of the population and owns uh -huh. over half the guns That's in the country. That's an interesting conversation, but when you bring muskets into it, it kind of discredits, I would say, your side. And by no. the way, to be fair, cause the, the councilman we're talking to did not think up this crackpot idea that was former Congresswoman Gabby Gifford. Ca councilman, we're out of time. When you run for mayor, we'll come back and we can debate muskets. Thank you.